Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu. Welcome back to another session on our series, Morning Reflections on the 99 Names of Allah, uh, in which we are going through the book, Reflecting on the Names of Allah by Jinan Yusuf. And today we are on the names of Al-Malik, Al-Malik, and Malik mulk all of which connotate and denote true and complete sovereignty and ownership. Inshallah, uh, with respect to these names and the names that we've already covered, we see and we must understand that Allah's names have to be understood holistically and in complement to one another. They can't be seen as in contrast or in competing with one another. Allah is whole. Allah is one, ahad. Uh, and each of these names form uh, one part or the other and, and complement each other in sense. Uh, so when we just focus solely as we oftentimes do on just one element of Allah's name or just one aspect of Allah's names, whether it's, for example, mercy or compassion, uh, and we only make that that is the center focus for us uh, and to the, to the uh, you know, it, ignoring of the other names or the other attributes, it might make us in some way, shape or form complacent in certain things. It might make us, uh, it might cause us in certain ways to ignore or downplay those aspects of us that might need to be worked on, that might need to be reformed or changed or improved. And when we just focus on one of these elements, we sometimes don't do uh, the proper diligence in seeing what the other names also offer to us. So this is why when we're introduced to mercy, in the first chapter of the Quran, in the Fatiha, when we open up the chapter uh, with Bismillah Rahman Rahim, Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen, we uh, send we 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 send praise and we open up in this aspect of mercy and compassion. We are immediately introduced to the concept of Allah being the one who is sovereign. Uh, when we say Maliki Omidin, the sovereign over judgment, sovereign over recompense, because there will be accountability as we believe in our faith. And so uh, when we reflect on these names today, inshallah, I want us to think about these concepts of ownership. Think of the concept of us being here essentially on this earth uh, as borrowed time, being here uh, and, and, and becoming attached to things that don't inherently belong to us and thinking about the relationship that we have with this, especially with respect to the names of Allah that we lift up today. So the names that we are lifting up, as mentioned, Al-Malik is the one who is the possessor. Al-Malik is oftentimes translated as the king or the ruler. Uh, and Malik al-Mulk is the possessor of sovereignty, the possessor of the dominion uh, of everything that, that is there. And so all of which of these names may appear to have the same meaning meaning, but they all have important nuances. Um, there's examples in roles that we might understand as human beings, as ordinary individuals, that uh, you may have the context of someone who owns something like a homeowner, but then you also have someone who is uh, a king, someone who is a ruler, someone who may rule not just a piece of land, but uh, is, is given charge to uh, a certain district or a plot or uh, any kind of sovereign state or whatever it may be. Um, linguist, linguistically, you have uh, Malik referring to owning of specific specific things. And Malik is something that's more general in, 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 in certain ways. And so these names complement each other. Again, they don't, they don't, uh, you know, bump up against one another or contrast one another, they complement each other. So Allah is one who is both the ruler uh, and the possessor. Um, which is ultimately completed by this aspect and this name of Malikul Mulk, who is the owner of the notion of sovereignty itself. And so these names connotate a full sovereignty over everything that is in this world, in this life, and the next, including us. So Allah is the owner of all things, and to Allah belong all things. And this kind of uh, comes to mind whenever we hear of the passing of somebody or we see, uh, mourn the loss of someone, the first thing we say is inna lillahi wa inna alayhi raji'un, that to Allah we belong and to Allah we return. We acknowledge this sense of ownership, the sense of belonging, uh, but taking a look at it in this aspect as well, because when we say oftentimes belonging or ownership, we oftentimes think of it in the concept of property and, and exchangeable goods, but uh, thinking of it as well in the aspect of belonging, that Allah is the one who nurtured us. We talked last time, Allah is the one who created us, who brought us up, who taught us, uh, and to Allah is the one 
uh, to whom we return and to whom we belong. So we, when we think about this name as well, uh, we, 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 and we navigate this aspect and these aspects of ownership and, and belonging that we aren't to become so attached to our possessions. We aren't to become so attached to that which is around us because we know that ultimately our return and our belonging is with our creator. So whatever we give you know, away in a sense, we, uh, that was given to us by Allah, uh, we are recompensed for it. Whatever we do that's harmful, uh, we are recompensed for it. But uh, acknowledging in the sense that when we are not the owners of this, when we are not the true owners, we are simply stewards, that uh, the owner of all of this will be the one who recompenses us for the good that is done. So Allah is manikul mulk, where we know where to turn when 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 things come with respect to shortages when we are in need of anything we know who is the one who uh, owns all of this who to whom all of this belongs so if allah is the owner of everything and possessor and uh, of sovereignty and uh, over everything then we know that what we have been given as human beings is an amana a trust that we have been given our bodies we have been given uh you know certain uh, agencies, we've been given certain things that other creation have not been given. And so uh, as such, the level of autonomy that we've been given and all these other blessings and gifts that we've been given, we must be accountable for them. We must be reflectful, respectful towards them, we must be mindful regardless, because at the end of the day, these are things that have been entrusted to us that we are simply caretaking for, that we are simply stewards for. Uh, these don't belong to us. And when we get out of the mindset that everything we have here is because of us and everything we have here is that we own it. Uh, it's not that we relinquish any responsibility. It actually adds the responsibility because we want to make sure we leave it in the best condition we can before we return to our creator. So how do we live with these names? Inshallah, just five quick things. One, we want to make sure how we live with these names and understanding these names, we take care of Allah's possessions because everything around us, ourselves included, are in Allah's belongings, are in Allah's possessions, are under the ownership of Allah. We want to take care of these belongings and use them in a way that are pleasing to Allah. Uh, in our bodies, if we uh, are able-bodied to help others, that if we are wealthy, we've been blessed with wealth and, and, and a lot uh, of, of finance and capital, we, we are able to help other people and give charity. Um, we use our gifts, we use that which has been given to us uh, to help not just take care of ourselves, but those around us, but also taking care of that which Allah has given us to live on, the earth, uh, the environment, other creatures. So thinking of us not just being in a world that is just created by our own means, but we are uh, sent to this world as khalaifa, as khalifas, as stewards. And so how will we return when uh, on the day of judgment, we bring back that which we sowed, we bring back how we came, how we left our Lord and uh, what we did. And now we're having to own up to what we had done. So what state will we return back to our Lord? Number two, when we seek something, we recognize that we have no right to it, uh, especially when we think about these names of Malik al-Mulk and Malik and al-Malik, we think about building a relationship of prayer, of trust, and asking of Allah for it, because these are not inherently things that we create or things that uh, belong to us. These are things that Allah will bestow upon us uh, in one way, shape, or form or another, or withhold from us. And so if we want anything, uh, adapting that mindset of that first, we ask Allah for it. And oftentimes, uh, this comes up in the istikhara prayer, that uh, if we're not sure on a matter, we pray istikhara for it, and we ask Allah if this is something that's good for us, to, 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 be, to not withhold it from us. And if this is something that's bad for us, then to let it pass from us. Um, and so keeping this mindset that we don't have a right to anything here, but we have the absolute right and we have the obligation to beseech Allah for it. Number three, we want to make sure we operate in a way that is free of possessions and attachments. We want to be sure we're not owned by what we own or that what we own is what defines us and our worth is inherent in that, that these are things that come and go, uh, but that our uh, true mark of ownership, that our true value is that we are uh, created beings, we are uh, heavenly 
uh, in, in, in our origin, we have been bestowed uh, by a divine figure uh, upon this earth for the caretaking and our return is to uh, the divine in that aspect. Number four, we want to remember that ultimately there is a day of judgment and that Allah is the judge, that none of this is being done in vain, that we will be accountable for that which we do and how we operate in this world. And lastly, we want to be in remembering this concept that Allah is Malikul Mulk, the owner of the dominion, the, so the sovereign, the possessor of sovereignty, that in times of loss, especially whether it's people that we know or it's our possessions and our wealth, that ultimately we want to remember that these are all things that belong to Allah. People, items, individuals, uh, you know, possessions, all that stuff. This is stuff that belongs to Allah, that came from Allah, that was created by Allah. And so it doesn't mean that we can't feel hurt or feel sad or upset, but we keep our hope over our despair because to Allah belong all things. And to Allah, we and they ultimately return. So inshallah, we use these names and we ask Allah to uh, allow us to continue to remember that anything that we see in this world, anything that we're able to do in this world are because of Allah's leave and Allah's blessing. Uh, and that we are reminded that uh, to not keep any attachments in this world that hold us from Allah and that the ultimate attachment we want, the ultimate company we seek and the ultimate belonging we desire is with Allah. Until next time, inshallah, assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.